July 31. A warning for God's people. Make this announcement to Israel and say this to Judah. Listen, you foolish and senseless people with eyes that do not see and ears that do not hear. Have you no respect for me? Why don't you tremble in my presence? I, the Lord, define the ocean's sandy shoreline as an everlasting boundary that the waters cannot cross. The waves may toss and roar, but they can never pass the boundaries I set. But my people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned away and abandoned me. They do not say from the heart, Let us live in awe of the Lord our God, for he gives us rain each spring and fall, assuring us of a harvest when the time is right. Your wickedness has deprived you of these wonderful blessings. Your sin has robbed you of all these good things. Among my people are wicked men who lie in wait for victims like a hunter hiding in a blind. They continually set traps to catch people. Like a cage filled with birds, their homes are filled with evil plots. And now they are great and rich. They are fat and sleek, and there is no limit to their wicked deeds. They refuse to provide justice to orphans and deny the rights of the poor. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? A horrible and shocking thing has happened in this land. The prophets give false prophecies, and the priests rule with an iron hand. Worse yet, my people like it that way. But what will you do when the end comes? Jerusalem's Last Warning Run for your lives, you people of Benjamin. Get out of Jerusalem. Sound the alarm in Tekoa. Send up a signal at Beth Hecarim. A powerful army is coming from the north, coming with disaster and destruction. O Jerusalem, you are my beautiful and delicate daughter, but I will destroy you. Enemies will surround you like shepherds camped around the city. Each chooses a place for his troops to devour. They shout, prepare for battle, attack at noon. No, it's too late. The day is fading and the evening shadows are falling. Well, then, let's attack at night and destroy her palaces. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. Cut down the trees for battering rams. Build siege ramps against the walls of Jerusalem. This is the city to be punished, for she is wicked through and through. She spouts evil like a fountain. Her streets echo with the sounds of violence and destruction. I always see her sickness and sores. Listen to this warning, Jerusalem, or I will turn from you in disgust. Listen, or I will turn you into a heap of ruins, a land where no one lives. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Even the few who remain in Israel will be picked over again as when a harvester checks each vine a second time to pick the grapes that were missed. Israel's constant rebellion. To whom can I give warning? Who will listen when I speak? Their ears are closed and they cannot hear. They scorn the word of the Lord. They don't want to listen at all. So now I am filled with the Lord's fury. Yes, I am tired of holding it in. I will pour out my fury on children playing in the streets and on gatherings of young men, on husbands and wives, and on those who are old and gray. Their homes will be turned over to their enemies, as will their fields and their wives. For I will raise my powerful fist against the people of this land, says the Lord. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. From prophets to priests, they are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wound. They give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of their disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore, they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. Israel rejects the Lord's way. This is what the Lord says. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. I posted watchmen over you who said, listen for the sound of the alarm. But you replied, no, we won't pay attention. Therefore, listen to this, all you nations. Take note of my people's situation. Listen, all the earth. I will bring disaster on my people. It is the fruit of their own schemes, because they refuse to listen to me. They have rejected my word. There's no use offering me sweet frankincense from Sheba. 
Keep your fragrant calamus imported from distant lands. I will not accept your burnt offerings. Your sacrifices have no pleasing aroma for me. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will put obstacles in my people's path. Fathers and sons will both fall over them. Neighbors and friends will die together. An Invasion from the North This is what the Lord says. Look, a great army coming from the north. A great nation is rising against you from far off lands. They are armed with bows and spears. They are cruel and show no mercy. They sound like a roaring sea as they ride forward on horses. They are coming in battle formation, planning to destroy you, beautiful Jerusalem. We have heard reports about the enemy, and we wring our hands in fright. Pangs of anguish have gripped us like those of a woman in labor. Don't go out to the fields, don't travel on the roads. The enemy's sword is everywhere and terrorizes us at every turn. Oh, my people, dress yourselves in burlap and sit among the ashes. Mourn and weep bitterly as for the loss of an only son, for suddenly the destroying armies will be upon you. Jeremiah, I have made you a tester of metals, that you may determine the quality of my people. They are the worst kind of rebel, full of slander. They are as hard as bronze and iron, and they lead others into corruption. The bellows fiercely fan the flames to burn out the corruption, but it does not purify them, for the wickedness remains. I will label them rejected silver, for I, the Lord, am discarding them. Hilkiah discovers God's law. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan, and he read it. Shaphan went to the king and reported, Your officials have turned over the money collected at the temple of the Lord to the workers and supervisors at the temple. Shaphan also told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a scroll. So Shaphan read it to the king. When the king heard what was written in the book of the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam son of Shaphan, Akbor son of Micaiah, Shaphan the court secretary, and Asaiah the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah. Inquire about the words written in this scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger is burning against us because our ancestors have not obeyed the words in this scroll. We have not been doing everything it says we must do. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Asaiah went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shalem, son of Tikva, son of Harhas, the keeper of the temple wardrobe. She said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you, This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the words written in the scroll that the king of Judah has read will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods. And I am very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will burn against this place, and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah who sent you to seek the Lord and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I said against this city and its people, that this land would be cursed and become desolate. You tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you, says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and been buried in peace. You will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city. So they took her message back to the king. From Second Chronicles In the eighteenth year of his reign, after he had purified the land and the temple, Josiah appointed Shaphan, son of Azaliah, Maaseah, the governor of Jerusalem, and Joah, son of Joahaz, the royal historian, to repair the temple of the Lord his God. They gave Hilkiah the high priest the money that had been collected by the Levites, who served as gatekeepers at the temple of God. The gifts were brought by people from Manasseh, Ephraim, and from all the remnant of Israel, as well as from all Judah, Benjamin, and the people of Jerusalem. He entrusted the money to the men assigned to supervise the restoration of the Lord's temple. Then they paid the workers who did the repairs and renovation of the temple. 
They hired carpenters and builders who purchased finished stone for the walls and timber for the rafters and beams. They restored what earlier kings of Judah had allowed to fall into ruin. The workers served faithfully under the leadership of Jahath and Obadiah, Levites of the Mirarite clan, and Zechariah and Meshulam, Levites of the Kohathite clan. Other Levites, all of whom were skilled musicians, were put in charge of the laborers of the various trades. Still others assisted as secretaries, officials, and gatekeepers. Hilkiah discovers God's law. While they were bringing out the money collected at the Lord's temple, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord that was written by Moses. Hilkiah said to Shaphan, the court secretary, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's temple. Then Hilkiah gave the scroll to Shaphan. Shaphan took the scroll to the king and reported, Your officials are doing everything they were assigned to do. The money that was collected at the temple of the Lord has been turned over to the supervisors and workmen. Shaphan also told the king, Hilkiah the priest has given me a scroll. So Shaphan read it to the king. When the king heard what was written in the law, he tore his clothes in despair. Then he gave these orders to Hilkiah. Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, Shaphan, the court secretary, and Isaiah, the king's personal advisor. Go to the temple and speak to the Lord for me, and for all the remnant of Israel and Judah. Inquire about the words written in the scroll that has been found. For the Lord's great anger has been poured out on us, because our ancestors have not obeyed the word of the Lord. We have not been doing everything this scroll says we must do. So Hilkiah and the other men went to the new quarter of Jerusalem to consult with the prophet Huldah. She was the wife of Shalom, son of Tikva, son of Harhas, the keeper of the temple wardrobe. She said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Go back and tell the man who sent you, This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this city and its people. All the curses written in the scroll that was read to the king of Judah will come true. For my people have abandoned me and offered sacrifices to pagan gods, and I am very angry with them for everything they have done. My anger will be poured out on this place, and it will not be quenched. But go to the king of Judah who sent you to seek the Lord and tell him, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the message you have just heard. You were sorry and humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this city and its people. You humbled yourself and tore your clothing in despair and wept before me in repentance. And I have indeed heard you says the Lord. So I will not send the promised disaster until after you have died and been buried in peace. You yourself will not see the disaster I am going to bring on this city and its people. So they took her message back to the king. 